Lifestyle banking has revolutionized the traditional banking system that we all know. But do you know how? My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. That's right. Lifestyle banking has put everyone in the center of the banking system, as opposed to the traditional banking system, which is designed primarily for the benefit of the banks. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we want to be able to control more of our financial destiny, then lifestyle banking is a solution for you. So by the end of this video, we have five points that we want to cover where, we go, where we're going to help you understand the difference between their bank versus our bank. And when we talk about our bank, we're talking about the one that we create through the concept of lifestyle, lifestyle banking or infinite banking or becoming your own banker, whichever um, catchphrase. catchphrase you go by. That's that's what we're talking about. <laughs> the very first point that we want to make is in the difference between the two is lifestyle banking is designed for the individual individual's purpose, whereas a traditional bank is designed for the banks, yep, their benefits, purpose, their benefits so mm -hmm. that they can profit. Yeah. When we think about how we leverage or use our banking system, it's all about the the how we want to use it. It's all about our concerns. It's all about how we want to retire. It's all about how we want to invest. Mm -hmm. When it comes to a traditional banking system, it's you have to fall into certain criteria where they tell you when you're going to pay the money back. They tell you how much you're going to um, have to pay in interest. Usually the, the loans are fixed or variable. But when it comes to lifestyle banking, we get to dictate all those different nuances where uh, in traditional banking system, we don't. So who wins at the end of the day is who has control. And if the banks have control, they win. If we have control, we win. That, that's the purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the point number one, <laughs> which control do you want, right? <laughs> that, that's really what we're trying to talk about because a lot of times people ask us all the time, Carmen and Darius, why do you do this whole thing with this life insurance? And for us, it's about control or like we talk about ownership. Mm -hmm. It's just about owning the banking functions mm -hmm. because when you own the banking functions in your life, you can create more stability, you can create more independence. And at the end of the day, we can generate as, mu as much wealth as we possibly can because because we are in charge of the process. So that's really why I would say is the purpose why we do this in the first place. And it doesn't have to be complicated or, or, um, or, or misleading or whatever the case may be. It's just like we're taking a peek at someone else's processes and going, hey, that looks good. How can I do that for myself within my own income and my own sphere, so to speak? Right. We take exactly what the banks do. We use that as kind of like a template. Mm -hmm. The banks... Uh, Borrow, borrow money from us at a low interest rate yeah. and then they charge a higher interest rate for access to money that isn't even theirs mm -hmm. so what we what we do in turn we look at that as a template okay if I'm going to borrow money from the insurance company I'm going to pay back what the banks would have charged me to borrow this money mm -hmm. and that difference is profit for the banks which if we create our own banking system lifestyle banking that profit is ours for us to reuse to invest in other things or pay off other debts mm -hmm. yeah and I honestly feel like for, for me, this perspective really shifted or, or I had made a major shift in like my education gap when I looked at like income, for example. I know I've said this on a previous video where like if we make $100,000, you know, minus taxes, call it 30%. Now I'm left with $70,000 mm -hmm. take home income, right? So if I have $70,000 of take home income and, you know, 20% of it is going to debt, you know, you, it, you, you can, no matter how much you slice that pizza at the end of the day, what I have at the end of the year might be how much okay. if 20% less if I save money like, like, like let's just talk about oh, I've paid all my bills I've paid everything and I'm not investing or creating other means of cash flow if maybe I'm saving 10% of my income then maybe I'll see $7,000 in the bank at the end of the year mm -hmm. right maybe that's what I find like the, the traditional American is doing and the traditional American isn't even saving money right so I'm up ahead so well, grand well when you think about it how can you save when you all your money is going to high interest debt? That, that's where I'm going to. So that, that's the point I'm trying to make is when, when we looked at this and I said, OK, if I have seventy thousand dollars that I am banking on, <laughs> you see what I did there um, <laughs> to, to, to come in for my income, then the idea would be I should be able to keep as much of that seventy thousand dollars if I control the direction of my money. Mm -hmm. But because we weren't doing that before we knew this concept, 
every year we were just spending our money and never seeing it again. Mm -hmm. And when it became apparent that you can see your money again and you can hold on to it and take ownership of more and more of your income every single year, it was a no brainer to say, this is my wealth building bucket. Mm -hmm. Just keeping more of my income Mm -hmm. (laughs) because, you know, you you can do crypto, you can do all sorts of investing and, and all of that. And I'm saying you should do it. But I'm saying at first, just try to keep a few more bucks. Yeah, you <laughs> in should, your pocket yeah and you should do those things and um lifestyle banking exactly exactly and i feel like lifestyle banking allows us to keep more of our money because we're in control of the process right now the num- point number one is purpose yeah the lifestyle banking is created for you individually where traditional banking is created for the profit of the bank mm-hmm. now point number two is control the ownership which we talked <laughs> I, a lot I, about i jumped ahead we, we, <laughs> We jumped ahead. We jumped ahead. Yes. Yes. But this system is perfect for every ambitious entrepreneur who yes. wants the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. And can handle it. And, and, and can have handle it because it's not easy. Because when you have a traditional banking system, it's all structured. When you have lifestyle banking, you have to Ain't create no structure. the structure. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say entrepreneurs is because they are always creating structure for their businesses, which their means uh, mentally they're able to prepare a system for their banking system much easier. Wait, hold on a second, though, because Darius is always drinking the entrepreneurial juice. And for my <laughs> homies out there who aren't entrepreneurs and have no desire to be entrepreneurs, that's totally fine. For everybody who is uh, managing their budgets and aware of all of your spending and you know what's coming in in and out, like this can work for you. You don't have to be an aspiring business owner in order for this to work. Darius is just saying traditionally people who have businesses – tend to actually no that that ain't true i was gonna say business owners we work with a lot of business owners who don't know who are not in touch with their financials <laughs> so I, I think it goes both ways yeah. if you are a business owner the idea for you this is really amazing because you have access to more capital that needs to be organized and funneled mm-hmm. and if you ha- don't have a business and maybe you're just uh working you know nine to five corporate america like we, how we were you know and you are in touch with your spending this is absolutely something that you should get into doing because it allows you more flexibility and more control and more ownership over your your dollars yeah absolutely control and ownership and the only point that i was trying to make not trying to knock anybody is it you have to create the structure where in a traditional banking system it's already structured Mm -hmm. so if um you're dedicated to living the lifestyle that you dream of lifestyle banking can support that Mm -hmm. It, it can absolutely support that yeah but if 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 you don't have a, a plan or have a, a vision of what you want to create, you're going to um, it, it's not going to work for you because you don't have a vision of what the future looks like for yourself and for your family or the system that you're using. Absolutely. So that's that's the point that I want that I want to make is with control and ownership becomes responsibility. Mm-hmm. And we can uh, I'll say that uh, that responsibility when we're using a traditional banking system because they bring all that to the table. But the difference is they get the profit from all that structure they give you. And with that said, here's a word from our sponsor. Are you looking for a life insurance policy specifically designed to help you accomplish your financial goals? And if you have a policy or if you're looking for more education, would you like to be a part of a community with like-minded individuals who are all using life insurance to accomplish your financial goals? If so, click on the link below. We would love for you to join the Wealth Nation Money School. So point number three is talking about the financial instrument and how we make this happen, right? So if we think about uh, if you're driving a car, someone has gas versus somebody has an electric car, at the end of the day, you guys both get to point A and point B. So there's really no difference. A car is a car. And when we talk about the financial instruments, you just have to understand how the different financial instruments in our industry work. And Mm -hmm. for us, we talk about life insurance versus a cash account at the bank, right? So either way, you as the depositor, you are going to deposit money into to the bank or a cash account every time you get paid, right? Um, the difference in how Darius and I like to do things is as the depositor with a whole life insurance policy is every time we save money, which happens every month like clockwork because we have the structure, um, it, we deposit that money into the life insurance company, if that makes sense. And, and to keep it simple, I know Darius is going to say that that's not exactly how it works, but we're keeping <laughs> it simple. At the end of the day, we are depositors. We take our savings, put it into insurance, or we take our income. And at some point we, we move our savings to maybe a savings account. Mm-hmm. So we b- primarily have been funding our life insurance policies with our savings um, because we, we want to have our cake and eat it too. Right. So let's, let's just talk about the features mm-hmm. when, Wait, is your head smoking because every little detail wasn't communicated? No, no, no. The 
The point I want to make is around <laughs> around the features of the difference between a cash account and a life insurance policy. Mm-hmm. So and, and I, I'm teasing Darius. Like um, that we're not withholding any information. It just it passes through a few accounts before this whole thing happens. So I know he's like, you're missing seven steps, <laughs> but it's a, it is what it is. So we get paid every two weeks. <laughs> every two weeks it goes to a portion goes to our savings account, Here we go. which is our, our the minimum that we have, which is 10 percent that we like to save. But then mm-hmm. we have another 30 percent that goes into our separate checking account account which we use to pay our policy premiums every two weeks Mm -hmm. and then the (laughs) money in our separate checking account every time a premium is paid because we have six annual premiums though that comes from those funds that have been isolated for um savings Mm -hmm. from savings Mm -hmm. so we only spend 60 percent of our income but we save 40 percent. see i knew it was bubbled up in there i was i was gonna move on to the features but you brought it up (laughs) go ahead so the features and, and these different financial instruments is a uh, cash account. A uh, regular bank generally offers uh, where you can have deposits. Mm-hmm. You get your money directly deposited into your account um, and you have withdrawals. Yes. Um, you have a debit and credit card and you have online banking. Mm-hmm. So that's basically the function of a cash account in a traditional um a traditional bank yeah when it comes to a whole life insurance policy you have several you know unique features within which includes your cash value savings uh portion so that cash that accumulates every time you pay your premium that money can be used also you have a death benefit um and big you, deal yeah it, it, that's a that's a huge deal because when when you think about the money that you have sitting in your bank versus the money you have in your policy, it doesn't have a death benefit. Mm-hmm. And that's a, a multiple of the, the money that you have, which is a, a great feature in, in itself. Yeah. And, and underrated. Right. Completely underrated. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking from just a, a simple savings account going back to what Darius was. Oh, talking. but I had one. I had one more feature. <laughs> My, my other feature is the fact that you can do insurance loans, um, yes. which which means you can you can access capital. Uh, you can access capital while your money is still in there growing, which mm-hmm. allows you to earn compound interest. Where you have to take withdrawals from your your cash account or get a separate loan yes. from the from the bank. So that's that's some of the features that's very uh, very different and unique for whole life insurance, which allows it to uh, operate the way it does. Yeah, and going back to the savings feature of it is my biggest thing again going back to this mindset shift because it's a complete mindset shift of of savings was if we're going to be saving money anyway and say for example we didn't have life insurance Mm -hmm. you know it is a huge benefit for you to if you are a a saver for you to look into whole life insurance because you are still able to save your money keep it liquid have access to it should you need it and have a death benefit at the same time so you know regardless of what you're trying to do if you get loans from the policy or not just being able to have savings and have a death benefit is the biggest thing because as we have seen it you know in our own personal lives and in potential clients lives is a lot of people and we talk about it before 50 percent of americans don't even have insurance Mm -hmm. so you know if something were to happen to you your family is only going to get what's in the bank if you if they're even on your account right because that could go to, to probate so the idea is um, you have to make sure that you're, you're protecting your, your loved ones first and foremost. And if you don't have insurance, it is your um, responsibility to make sure that your, your family's income can be sustained should something happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. I'm, I'm glad you brought that out. Yeah. Now, the fourth point, um, we're able to move on to the fourth, fourth yes. point, <laughs> is the cash value growth. Um, every time you make your payment, uh, one part of your money goes to the cash value and uh, component. Other part goes to whole life insurance. Um, what we basically what we just talked about. You have a savings component, which is your cash value. Then you actually have your your death benefit. The policy's cash value earn guaranteed interest, and taxes are deferred on the accumulated uh, accumulated um, amount growth. earned mm-hmm. uh, accumulated growth. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to your uh, cash account, you do have interest that's earned, but it's is not guaranteed, and it's. I think as of creating this video, it's at 0.42%. But we're also... 0.042%. We're also talking about a savings account. We're not talking about... Um uh, checkings account, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so just to make sure we're, we didn't lose anybody, we, we're only talking about a savings account and the idea behind this, or, or really the premise behind this is understanding that in a life insurance policy, it's going to grow guaranteed compounded interest. In a savings account, it's going to grow compounded interest as well, but you can't touch those funds in order to receive the compounding effects. So the biggest deal of understanding how the how both accounts grow is, is huge to understand that because we know that if we borrow from our savings account, 
account, that money is gone. We're never going to see it again. And then there goes the compounding because now our money is being compounded on a smaller amount. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we get a loan from the insurance company, um, we are not actually borrowing from our policy. We're using the life insurance company instead, and they're collateralizing our our policy, essentially. So that way our money continues to grow. Yeah. And and moving on to point number five, which are the loans, that's the key component. Mm -hmm. That's the key component, which is the fact that we're basically using our money as leverage to borrow from the insurance company. Whereas when we borrow from the bank, they're utilizing all of our money sitting in the bank and not paying us paying us 0.042% and then lending at a very high interest rate. Yeah, yeah. So it's for their profit versus um, uh, our own lifestyle banking system, which you create for ourselves is for our profits. Absolutely. And and going back, see, I jumped ahead again talking about the loans, but I wanted to make sure we, we, we do the due diligence and in, in sharing everything with you because loans are the biggest thing I would say that have changed our financial trajectory mm-hmm. because of the, of just that one little nugget we do. And that's the, that's the only similarity between a traditional bank and lifestyle banking is the fact that we, um, they lend money, um, to people who need it. Yeah. That's the only similar, similar layers. They lend money to people who need it. Yeah. And, and you know, when people go back to like, what's the difference between wealthy people versus, you know, the middle class is education. That's mm-hmm. the only difference. And I would say the difference between, um, they know it, where to access cash. It, it, that's the only difference is just, they understand education. They know how to access cash. They know how to use money. And so if you're at a point where you're thinking, I need to change my financial well being, then we totally recommend keep watching the wealth nation channel. <laughs> go and subscribe if you haven't. Um, read books, listen to podcasts, let podcasts and, and YouTubers or whatever the case may be, be your next best friends. Fire your existing best friends because clearly you're not where you need to be and start watching us, watching whoever you need to be and we will sign up as your virtual best friends and pump you with as much education as you need so that you can start thinking about things differently and start changing your trajectory. Mm-hmm. Because uh, we actually had a comment uh, where an individual was saying, hey, if I live paycheck to paycheck, how um, can I get in front of people who are wealthy like what am I going to talk to them about how am I going to relate to these people and the biggest thing that I was saying is you know you have to start educating yourself so you can start having uh different conversations right or start going to nice places like go to a hotel and drink your coffee instead of going to starbucks and drinking your coffee because you know if you go to a fancy hotel you're going to be surrounded with individuals who can afford to stay there Mm -hmm. and now you can sit there be a fly on the wall and see how they're moving and grooving and start learning different ways to start aspire and and just being in a different environment yeah it's we look at somebody as is wealthy because of how much money they have but the difference between the two really is how much knowledge they have hence his shirt wealth is a mindset wealth is literally the freedom that you are creating between your two ears to be able to translate that into your lifestyle so that you can start living the lifestyle and taking ownership and just living a life that you want right so if you want more information or knowledge on this idea of how what strategy am i going to use well check out our next video where we give you different ideas on how to use your policy and don't forget to own your own lifestyle or someone else will